Hi, my name is Taiwo Imadi, church pastor here at One Body Church. Um, I'm super excited that I'm um, seeing you again today. Today is the fifth night uh, in our seven nights to Christmas, um, uh, seven lessons, seven nights to Christmas, of course. Christmas is just, just uh, about uh, three nights away, and, and I, I love Christmas. I, I, I'm, I'm sorry, you guys, I love Christmas. It's just, just, a, just a feeling of holiday season, people remembering the Lord. I mean, it's, it's an opportunity for many churches all over the world to actually talk about Jesus. And for me, that's remarkable, and I'm, and I'm really excited about this season. I hope you are, too. Today is the fifth night, and the le- title of today's lesson is I am the Lord's servant. Open your Bibles with me to Luke chapter 1. We're going to read quickly um, 34 to 38. Mary asked the angel, how, but how can this happen? I'm a virgin. The angel replied, the Holy Spirit will come upon you and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. So the baby to be born will be holy and he will be called the Son of God. What's more, your relative Elizabeth has become pregnant in her old age. People used to say she was barren, but she has conceived a son and is now in her sixth month. For the word of God will never fail. 38, which is where I'm going to. Mary responded, I am the Lord's servant. May everything you have said about me come true. And then the angel left her. You know, we saw earlier in, in yesterday's um, uh, lesson about the Holy Spirit. And we saw the role of the Holy Spirit in, in the entire process. In fact, we saw the response of the angel. And the angel was simply saying that all these things I'm talking about are going to happen by the power of the Holy Spirit. In fact, through the story of the Lord's birth, according to Luke, with the interaction between Zechariah and the angel, interaction between um, um, Elizabeth, the, the mother of, of John the Baptist, and Mary, the mother of our Lord Jesus Christ. We keep seeing the person of the Holy Spirit coming up every now and then. And now, the conversation was over. The angel had said everything he wanted to say to her. And this is the last word that Mary says to the angel before he departs. 38, Mary responded, I am the Lord's servant. But I want us to see it in other versions. Let's see it in um, Amplified. Then Mary said, Behold, I am the handmaiden of the Lord. Let it be done to me according to what you have said. I am the handmaiden of the Lord. Let it be done to me according to what you have said. NIV says, I am the Lord's servant. King James says, Behold, the handmaid of the Lord. Let it be unto me according to thy word. And the angel departed from her. What a remarkable statement. A statement that revealed the state of mind of the mother of our Lord Jesus Christ. Remarkable. And you see, it, it, if she had said, I'm the Lord's servant, maybe it, it, we have not been able to convey enough the meaning of the line. Actually, when she says, I am the Lord's servant, may it be done unto me according to the word of the Lord, or may everything you have said about me come true according to the NLC. It's, a, it's an insight into the mindset of this young servant girl. So it's not just using the word servant flippantly. Actually, the word servant there means that I'm going to do everything the Lord wants me to do. What a, what a mindset. What a way to imagine what God is doing. Perhaps what a way to respond. Instead, what a way to respond to what God is saying to us. And this is the kind of mindset that the Lord is hoping every Christian is going to come into, of course, through his word, of course, through prayer, and through interaction with, with, what, with the characters of scripture, and of course, with, with other believers. That is the kind of mindset that we should come to. If you open the Bible to the book of Romans, chapter 12, some of you already know it, verse 1 and 2. I'm going to verse 2, but let me start from verse, verse 1. Romans, chapter 12. Verse 1. And so, dear brothers and sisters, dear brothers and sisters, I plead with you to give your bodies to God. Give your bodies to God. Just, this is that's exactly what a servant will do. And this is not a servant that is being forced now. A, a willing servant who would give 
him or herself over to the Lord and say, Lord, take my body. As he says, because of what he has done for you, in recognition of what God has done for you. When you imagine the greeting the angel gave to Mary, favored one, the Lord is with you. Now you understand what it means that the Lord is with her. Because this girl was abandoned to the Lord. And that's what the Bible is saying here. That let them be a living and holy sacrifice. The kind he will find acceptable. Mary was found acceptable. This is truly the way to worship. You know, I, I see a lot of people around, running on the floor, praying for very long hours, and they call it worship. Well, it's, 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 I, I, did not, I did not think that what they are doing is, is out, out of place for worship. But Paul wrote here clearly, this is truly the way to worship him, which, which ties back to what the Lord was saying in the book of John, Chapter 4, when he was talking to the woman by the well in, Naz in, uh, in Samaria, saying true worshippers worship in spirit and in truth. It's beyond what we're saying. It's beyond how, uh, 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 what we are doing uh, every, every, maybe every Sunday in the week. It's our entire lives abandoned in the hands of God to use as a life. And verse 2 of Romans 12 says, Don't copy the behavior and the customs of this world. But let God transform you into a new person by changing the way you think. Transform you into a new person by changing the way you think. Until then, the Bible says then, until you have been transformed into a new person by God changing the way you think, then you will learn to know God's will for you, which is good and pleasing and perfect. This is where Mary was. God's will for her was pleasing was fantastic. As far as it's concerned, everything that God wanted to do, do through her or do on her or do for her was the perfect thing that could ever happen to her. In her mind, she was thinking, whatever God wants for me is the best thing that can ever, can ever happen to me. That is the point where Mary is at. And, and this, the things that Mary was saying, I'm not sure could have come outside, outside teaching. Somebody must have done work on this young girl to produce this kind of mindset. She had the perfect line as a closing line in an, in an encounter with an angel. Praise the Lord. You know, when we read Matthew chapter 6, verse 10, the first lines, or the first line, the first few lines in the Lord's recommendation of prayer, you will now understand when he says, pray in this manner. That's Matthew 6, verse 9. Pray like this. Our Father in heaven, may your name be kept holy, or hallowed be your name, as many of us know it. Verse 10, may your kingdom come soon. May your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. That's where prayer must start from. Everyone who is approaching God in prayer must approach God with the mindset that your will must be done in my life. Your will must be done in my life. And you see, Mary did a very, very remarkable thing. A very remarkable thing. By uttering those words, she shows that she has come to accept God's will for her life. Not just because somebody said it, because God said it. What, what a remarkable thing. And, and, and if you look at writings of Paul, I want to share with you two things, two, two introductory parts of Paul's letters. Romans chapter 1, verse 1. And you will hear the words Paul uses. This letter is from Paul, a slave of Christ Jesus. Another version says, uh, Amplified says, a bond servant of Jesus, the Messiah. NIV says, a servant of Christ Jesus. Look at that. That is Paul the Apostle. Let's see Titus chapter 1, verse 1. This letter is from Paul, a slave of God and an apostle of Christ Jesus. This is the mindset of everyone. I mean, I mean, remember, remember the interaction between Jesus and his disciples in John chapter 13 at, at the at the at the feet wash, at, at the last at the last last supper. He says, "A servant is not greater than his master." That is how that is the relationship between them. Even though in John 15 he says that I, I do not call you servants, but I call you friends. But let me tell you the fact: the disciples of Jesus, though he called them friends, continue to see themselves. As a servant, and so it was two. It was a two pronged. Uh, it was a two uh, part relationship. Sometimes it was their master, and and they were his servants. Other times it was their friends. In intimacy, it was their friends. But in duty, it was their servant. Today we see a lot of people who love the intimacy. Lord is my friend part, but they don't want to hear the line servant in their ears. What's the lesson today? 
How do you respond to God's word? The biggest show of faith in God is that we accept his will for our lives. It's not about confession. It's not about saying things. It's about saying, Lord, let your will be done in my life. Today, what we see is a lot of rebellious people who are using confession of faith to mask their rebellion. Instead of them to accept what God is doing in their lives, even when clearly God brings a word to them, they prefer instead to what they call change the will of God. You hear, you hear some ministers confused as they are. May the Lord have mercy on them. Say things like, you can change the will, the will of God by, de- by declaration. What kind of falsehood is that? Those who experience the hand of God remarkably in their life, that their lives have been documented for thousands of years, they had one thing in common. For them, it was, let your will be done in my life. I'm going to read one more verse of scripture to you so that you can seal up these thoughts in your mind. Luke chapter 1, 45. When Mary arrived at the house of Elizabeth, she went to confirm, of course, what the angel had said. Listen to what Elizabeth uh, said to her. Verse 44, Luke 1, 44. When I heard your greeting, the baby in my boom jumped for joy. Verse 45, this is what Elizabeth said to Mary. You are blessed because you believe that the Lord will do what he said. That's what differentiated Mary from her husband. Mary believed that the Lord would do what he said. And she said, be it unto me according to your word. I am your servant. Can you say the same thing to God today? Thank you for taking time to listen today. I hope that you will share this, these great lessons with your friends and family. It's really that your, that, your, that your Christian friend, who you know is totally out of the will of God. Let them listen to it. I believe that the Holy Spirit is going to speak to their heart and will help them to think differently in Jesus' name. Please leave your comments. I'm begging. Leave your comments. I'd like to share from you. If it's something that strike, struck you in the things you're saying, leave a comment so that we can also respond to you. God bless you in Jesus' name. See you tomorrow. Bye-bye.